What's on the table is that the Iranians don't want negotiations. Um, Dan Sinor said chasing Iranians to the negotiating table. Ken Pollock, do you think Iran, anybody in Iran wants negotiations? I think the problem is that the Iranians do want negotiations. It's not clear that they actually want a deal. That's the problem. And that's exactly what Dan is getting at, and he's right to. But you know, the point that, look, we're not the ones writing out the policy for the administration. If we were, we'd be glad to engage this question of exactly when. For the purposes of this debate, for the abstract uh, expression of it, I think that the key point is, again, what will it take to get the allies signed up for the tough sanctions? If it's six months of making a good faith effort, fine. If they say nine, fine. Now, we can't let it go forever. And for me, the big question mark is, can we get them signed up to harsh sanctions in advance based on when the Iranians pass certain milestones? That ought to be the key question. Really make a point there, because that is an important point. And actually, we did that. We had them, as Nick well knows, signed up in advance for tough negotiations in 2006 when we offered tough sanctions. When we offered direct negotiations, the deal was that the allies would agree ahead of time that they would support tough sanctions on the Iranians if the Iranians did not agree to suspend enrichment. The Iranians did not agree to suspend enrichment. We got Security Council resolutions, which the Russians in particular, as Nick knows, because he spent hours and hours dealing with the Russians, uh, managed to take every single tooth out of. Now, we've since the Obama administration has been in office, had the Russian uh, foreign minister in Washington, and he's announced that, in fact, he doesn't believe it's time for tougher sanctions against the Iranians. But, but I think it's very important for people in the audience, first of all, to look at the wording of the resolution. The question is not all of the questions that Nick and Ken are trying to get you to, to focus on. It's not, should we go to war? It's not, should we do diplomacy or not diplomacy? The question is, is our current policy going anywhere? That's the question. And I find it really fundamentally irresponsible for Nick and Ken to act like, let's just give diplomacy a chance, because we haven't done it before. Nick Burns. Liz and I are, uh, I'm not going to engage in attacks. So Liz and I are friends and we've been colleagues. I, I don't, honestly, I don't think that was in a personal attack. Oh, that was, I mean, that was right to the core of your argument. We, we also, it's not true that we live in alternate universes, but it may seem that way. Now, what happened in 2006 when the United States government made the most ambitious offer we'd ever made? And I really commend President Bush and Vice President Cheney and Secretary Rice for, for order, authorizing that. We made a very good offer, and the Iranians turned it down. That's the Iranians' fault. They walked away at that time. But what hadn't happened, what hadn't happened is that we did not have explicit promises from the Russians and Chinese, much less the Germans, French and British, as to what type of sanctions would follow. And so what Ken and I are arguing is that it would, I think, behoove itself to President Obama to make a very explicit deal with Moscow and Beijing before the United States sits down at the negotiating table, the Russians and Chinese will specify the type of sanctions that would ensue should negotiations fail. That would be a stronger position than we had in the Bush administration. This policy was actually sold internally because people were told that we had commitments that there would be sanctions if the Iranians, in fact, did not suspend enrichment. Now, maybe, you're, you know, maybe you're, it's semantics about specific sanctions, but the idea was... The, I'm telling you what I know. <laughs> what I know is that we had a commitment from those allies that we would go to sanctions, that they would support tough sanctions if, in fact, the Iranians refused to suspend. The Iranians refused to suspend, and we got no tough sanctions. The, tough, the word tough is not accurate. I negotiated that deal ahead of time. You negotiated, I negotiated for weak sanctions. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, let's be fair about this, Liz. Let's be fair about it. Uh, I served in a Democratic administration and a Republican administration. The policy of both President Clinton and President Bush has not worked, and we ought to have the courage to see it I totally and the agree courage to I admit it. And so what President Obama is trying to do is to create a new type of diplomacy. It is very tough-minded. It allows us to fall back on military force if we have to, but it does give diplomacy a chance for the first time. We did not have commitments for the type of specific sanctions, that would go into play, and you haven't seen that in 2006 and seven and eight. These were very weak UN Security Council resolutions, admittedly. And now we've got to have a different way of going forward with diplomacy. So if Liz and Dan say diplomacy's failing, Ob President Obama's failing, 
then I think what they're really doing is leaving him with one option, and that is war, and they can't deny that. Dan, so you know, the, the, Nick Burns just made the point, why not give it a chance? It's a new initiative, and he says in a new style, why not give it a chance? Because it takes two parties to participate in the diplomatic process, and right now there's only one party participating in it. So we can call and call and call all we want, but they're not participating. And I know we're asking everyone here to vote on this motion, as Liz alluded to earlier. The Arab world, which is closest to this, is already voting how they think diplomacy is going, how the current strategy is going. I just want to read you an editorial from the Jordan Times. It says, Arab capitals have all the right to be worried about a new adventurous U.S. policy in this part of the world that may again not succeed as planned. Washington surely cannot dramatically shift its policy vis-a-vis -vis the countries in the Gulf. The new administration lo risks losing its barely regained credibility in the region if it does not consult its friends about its new standpoints in the area. New friends should not come at the expense of old ones. This was not written at the height of the unilateralism of the Bush administration. This was published in the Jordan Times today. The Arab world is deeply concerned that the message the administration is sending is it's going to cut some sort of grand bargain potentially with, the with Iran at best, and at worst, leave an open-ended process, which is this, we're calling and calling and begging them to come to the table, and they're never responding, and oh, by the way, the clock runs, and a nuclear bomb appears at the end of the day. That's, so debating, you know, giving diplomacy a chance, not giving it a chance, we're perfectly prepared to give it a chance, but just listen to those closest to it in the region. They don't believe that it's, there's any reciprocity on the other side. Ken Pollack. Good. First, let's, you know, you've accused us of mischaracterizing. Let's not mischaracterize what the Arabs are saying either. They are concerned about the negotiations. They are not saying don't offer to talk to the Iranians. They are not saying don't talk to the Iranians. What they're saying is when you talk to the Iranians, do this and this, and you better tell us everything you're doing, and you'd better not do the following things. Second, as Nick pointed out, the answer to the, the issue is not that we only have two people at the table and one won't come. There is a third party in the room, as we keep trying to point out. That's the entire international community. And the question I would put back to you and to Liz, Dan, is basically this. You are saying you want tough sanctions. How do you plan to get those tough sanctions without going through diplomacy? Okay.